السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا قيل لهم وإذا قيل لهم اتبعوا ما أنزل الله قالوا بل نتبع ما وجدنا عليه آباءنا أولو كان الشيطان يدعوهم إلى عذاب السعير صدق الله العلي العظيم One of the most important principles of Islam is the promotion and the maintenance of reason and mind to respect reason, to incorporate reason in our daily life decisions in our daily life relations, in our daily life findings and discoveries. Reason plays a major role in religion and also in the human life and occupies a very important, very important position. The most important أول ما خلق الله سبحانه وتعالى العقل according to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم the first thing that has been created the first item that has been created in this universe was reason and عقل because it is precious because without reason our life is reduced to the life of animals and cattle بهائم Therefore, the Holy Quran is splintered with invitations to use our minds. And the Holy Quran always praises those who use their mind. And because reason is important, taqlid and emulation is forbidden when it comes to the principles and foundations of religion. What does that mean? The foundations of religion are Tawheed. One of them is monotheism. And this is the most important foundation. Tawheedullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The belief in monotheism. The belief in the integrity of God. God is different from humans. God has different characteristics and attributes. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ God has no similarity. God has no physical being. This conclusion, we have to reach to this conclusion without emulation. What does that mean? 
It means it's okay for your parents to teach you this, to guide you to this principle, to encourage you to understand it, to understand it, to make it easy for you to understand it. But then, once you understand this, you cannot go and say, I believe in monotheism because my father and my mother believe in it. I'm following my parents. No, you can't say that. Yes, my parents had taught me this, encouraged me to learn this, to embrace monotheism, to embrace Nubuwa, the Prophet wasallam, to believe, to believe in the hereafter, in the Akhirah. They taught me, they encouraged me, they made it easy for me to understand. But then you cannot continue believing in that because your father said so, or your mother or your friend. You have to have your own sovereignty in this, your own independence. After that you say, I believe in Tawheed because it makes sense, not just because my father told me so. Now, yes, my father told me so in the beginning, but now I embrace this concept and this idea. I embrace it wholeheartedly. This is the meaning that we cannot do taqlid, emulation, or imitation of others in this. You have to be independent. Once you understand it, then you sign a contract, you yourself, with your own conviction, with your own understanding. Therefore, we have to discover life, my friends, is a, a journey of learning every day, every single sunrise and every single morning is an opportunity for us to learn, to discover new realities in this universe. This is the journey of this life. Discoveries does not end by the age of 20 or by the age of 30 or by the age of 70. This is a continuous journey in this life. And you have to choose. Your parents cannot choose for yourself, my friends. Your parents can teach you, but they can't choose for you. The parents cannot choose for us our path. They can guide us, they can teach us, they can educate us, but then after that the choice is ours. إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Therefore, it's not enough. This is exactly what the Holy Quran says in Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse 28. The Holy Quran says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Come and follow and listen to what God has sent to you their answer, the pagans, the polytheists, the mushrikeen of Mecca, the polytheists, the Meccans, they would respond, They say, we follow that which we found our fathers or our forefathers following. We are satisfied with that. What does that mean? It means that this is a blind emulation. التقليد الأعمى وهو لا يجوز التقليد الأعمى لا يجوز We are following blindly following what our fathers have been following so we are satisfied with that we do not want to use our brain we do not want to use our reason here and this is the case my friends to be honest with you this is the case with many people in the community Muslims and non-Muslims, they are born into a family, into certain culture, certain tradition, certain religious orientation, and they stick with that for the rest of their life. They take that for granted. How many among Muslims and non-Muslims today say to himself and herself, wait a minute, I've been born in this family, it's true. I come from these parents. But then who says this is the right path? Shouldn't I do the discovery myself? Shouldn't I go and investigate? Today we investigate everything.
everything in America when you want to do it, when you want to buy a house, a car, health insurance, this and that, you investigate. Why when it comes to religion we do not give ourselves a chance to investigate, to find out? Why we take religion for granted? We have to incorporate our mind. We have to give ourselves a chance to go and dig deep into the foundations of our belief and try to do new discoveries. Believe me, you would never enjoy religion unless you make the discoveries yourself. Yourself. But if someone else is doing the homework for you, there is no enjoyment. Do you see some parents who do the homework for their kids? Do you think that child is going to progress in the school, to move forward? He's not going to learn anything. His parents are doing the work for him. We have to do the discovery. We have to read. We have to investigate. We have to challenge our doctrines. Does not necessarily mean we are wrong. No, we could be right. But even this right has to be investigated again. And it has to be questioned. And we have to continue reading. التقليدُ الأعمى The blind emulation is unacceptable. It leads into what? In most cases, when you follow something blindly, it leads into تعصر Narrow-mindedness and big-headedness. In most cases. Because he doesn't understand. He does not read. He only listens to someone or something and then he follows it blindly without incorporating his aql, his understanding. So it leads into narrow-mindedness. When we shut the brain, we shut the brain, the brain becomes inactive. That is the main reason for ta'assu. That is the main reason for hate. People start suspecting about each other, hating each other. Because they shut the brain. They don't read. They don't compare. Just because someone said something somewhere, we take it for granted, we believe in it, and we follow it, and we act upon that. And this is the problem of the Muslim society today. Today. In Muslim countries as well as non-Muslim countries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to use our brain, to incorporate our brain. Not just in religion, in every aspect of our life, my friend. Religion and aql and reason play, plays a role. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He states, إِنَّمَا يُدْرَكُ الْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ بِالْعَقْلِ وَلَا دِينَ لِمَنْ لَا عَقْلَ لَهِ It's only and only. Through reason, we can obtain and attain goodness in this life. يُدْرَكُ الْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ The entirety of wholesomeness and goodness is only obtained and attained by aql, by reason. وَلَا دِينَ لِمَنْ لَا عَقْلَ لَهِ Someone who does not use his brain, that person does not have deen, does not have religion. Him and the one who worships the idol are the same. Because the one who worship, worships the idol does not use his brain. If he uses his brain for five minutes, he would not worship the idol. وَلَا دِينَ لِمَنْ لَا عَقْلَ لَهِ And the Holy Quran says about those who received damnation, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلْ مَا كُنَّا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْسَعِيدِ If we have given ourselves a chance, to use reason, na'qir. We would not have been today part of the people of damnation and hellfire. But because we, God has given us this opportunity and this gift, we did not use it. So, in conclusion, we should not depend on the tradition of the family. The tradition of family is respected as long as it has no conflict with God. And always we have to investigate, my friends. We have to ask. 
If we don't ask, we don't learn. If we don't investigate, we would stay idle where we are. We don't move forward. It is only through the journey of research, the journey of asking, the journey of discoveries that, that we can reach to the ultimate truth, to the ultimate reality. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى والدين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته عليا أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور صدق الله العلي العظيم Today, the biggest danger in the Muslim societies is the danger of sectarianism and disunity among the Muslim Ummah. There are entities and agencies and governments that are spending billions of dollars to achieve this goal, the goal of disuniting the Muslim Ummah dismembering the Muslim Ummah, the body of the Muslim Ummah, creating fear, creating anxiety, creating a climate of hate and suspicion among the Muslims. So they start hating each other, treating each other like suspects, like enemies, contrary to the teachings of the Holy Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wahida innama al-mu'minuna ikhu the community of the believers and the observants are nothing but the brothers and sisters but these internal and external elements they are spending money mobilizing their agents, their media, to create this climate of disunity and disrespect and suspicion among the Muslims. I have been saying this and many of you are witness for many years, for almost two decades, I have been saying that the only way out of that, out of this global crisis that has been increasing in the last few years 
is the tafahum, the understanding, the respect among the Muslims, among the Sunnis and the Shias. They have to work for that. They have to work to create this atmosphere of mutuality. And this is something vital. This is a bloodline for Islam today. Islam has only two bases. Kalimatul Tawheed, monotheism, wa Tawheedul Kalim. Equal to monotheism is unity. Monotheism would worth nothing if there is no unity, if there is fighting. If there is fighting among Muslim societies. Unity cannot be, uh, monotheism cannot be achieved. Both they go hand in hand, my friends. Both they have to go hand in hand. Monotheism and unity. Kalimatul Tawheed, which is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Next to it, next to it is Tawheedul Kalima also. To stand together. Some people do not pay attention to this. They don't understand this. They don't get it. And some people, they get it. They know the danger, the scope of the danger, the severity of this danger, but they don't care. They are careless. They go about their way and their life. But we have to do something about it. We have to take some proactive, proactive steps and measures. We, we. And you know what I mean by we. We have to be the pathfinders, the pioneers on the path of unity. Today, those who call for disunity are in millions, multi-millions, but the very few. Well, takun minkum ummatun. Among you should be some pioneers who call for unity and understanding to save Islam. Islam is at stake. Not this country or that country, not this group or that group. Islam as a whole is in danger. Islam is in danger. Number one step is that we must respect the others, even if we disagree with them. Even if we profoundly disagree with others, we must respect them. <clears throat> we must respect their leaders. Each side has leaders. They adore their leaders, demeaning them, putting them down, being sarcastic about them would not serve, would not help. Allah says to the Muslims that when you speak to the non-Muslims, non-believers, do not put their leaders down. Do not badmouth their leaders. And you know who were the leaders of the non-Muslims at that time? Who were the leaders? Asnam, Asnam, idols. Allah says, do not put their idols down. Because once you do this to them, they're going to put your Lord down. When you bow mouth their leaders, their idols, you bad mouth them, they're going in return, they're going to return the favor to you, and they bad mouth your Lord out of ignorance. Adwan, out of ignorance. Someone who has understanding would not badmouth God, but because out of ignorance they will do that. So you don't, you don't have to do that. Don't do it to them. Therefore, my friends, <clears throat> there are plenty of ayat and riwayat that instruct us and guide us and teach us to be respectful with others. To be respectful. We can preserve, I can preserve my personal conviction in my heart. I don't have to share it. If I dislike someone or if I like someone, I can preserve it in my heart. I don't have to carry a microphone and curse this one and badmouth that one and slander this one and vilify the other one. I don't have to do that. This is not the way. We have to be positive. Da'wah in Islam has to be positive. Speak about what is good and keep what is not good, what is an inflammatory, keep it in your heart. Suppress it in your heart. Use taqiyya. This is the concept of taqiyya. 
You don't have to create a crisis there. We have to learn, we have to learn the akhlaq and the manners of Ahlul Bayt. It's a pity that the followers of Ahlul Bayt do not follow the tradition of their leaders. They carry their names. We name Ja'far and Sadiq and Baqir and Hamza and Ali and Hussein. But when it comes to the character, we are away from that. We are away from that. The second step, the first step, no bad mouthing. La Jews, according to our maraja, our ulama, our intellectuals, we are not allowed to bad mouth the leaders of the other side, whoever they are. Whoever they are, whether Khalifa, whether Amir, whether Sheikh, whether, we cannot. We should not make it personal. Amir al Mumin says, never in a conflict, never bad, bad mouth someone, your enemy. Yes, describe what he or she did. Describe it. Inni akrahu lakum an takunu sababi. Amir al Mu'mineen and his tradition, Imam Hussein and his tradition, Fatima al Zahra and her tradition are away from bad mouthing. They don't use bad mouthing in their dictionary, in their life. They are away from it. Inni akrah, I hate for my followers to be sababin, bad mouthers. Don't. This is number one. Number two, we have to take the initiative in reaching out to others. Others do not know about us. We are still majhul and non. The followers of Ahlul Bayt and the tradition of Ahlul Bayt is still a mystery today. Mystery to many people, Muslims and non-Muslims. The rumors out there about us are more than the facts. If you ask an average person, what do you know about the followers of Ahlul Bayt? The answers are going to be rumors, not facts. So we have to change the rumors, switch them into facts. We have to reach out. We have to take this step. Yes, there are some people who do not accept us. They don't listen to us. They are not even willing to recognize us as Muslims. We don't deal with them. We don't waste time. Those people, even the prophets, they did not waste their time with them, let alone us. But others, they have good heart, and they are willing to listen, and they are willing to receive. So our job is... لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Your job is to send the message, the positive message, leave the rest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have to take the step. Why? Because عَامِلِ النَّاسَ بِأَخْلَاقِكَ لَا بِأَخْلَاقِهِمْ Treat people with your own tradition, not with their own tradition. According to your own standards and values, not according to their standards and values. Sometimes their standards is always to be suspicious about you, is to badmouth you, is to slander you. So you don't use this. You use what you learn from your prophet and your imams. They always reached out to others with, with this, with this, with this axiom. اِدْعُ إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكْ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنِ Call for the path of your Lord with wisdom. Incorporate wisdom and aql. Well, mawid al hasan. Allah has given us good vocabularies of nice words. We can use them. Why we don't use them? Why we choose the bad ones? Allahumma khfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat Innaka mujibu al-da'awat Innaka ghafiru al-khati'at Allahumma wahid kalimata al-muslimin Ala al-khayri wal-birri Wal-salahi wal-taqwa Ya arham al-rahimin Munna ala mardana bil-shifai wal-afiyah Wa'ajjil fi faraj sayyidina wa qa'idina Sahib al-asri wal-zaman Wa ila arwah al-mu'mina wal-mu'minat Wal-shuhada Thawab al-fatihati ma'a al-salati Ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad Oh!